Hello and welcome to Angular Recipe. So today on the menu, we're going to be talking about debugging your code in Angular. And I'm going to show you two ways of doing it. One's inside of Chrome and the other one inside of VS Code. So first, let me walk you through the code that we're going to use as a sample. So here we have a setup where we have an observable that is getting some account info and basically it's only gonna fire or it's only gonna be active once it has an account status. So we do have an interface here at the top showing what type of things we expect in the account info. Okay. We have an inline template here that is um, just basically going to switch from loading to showing the account and the account number. Now to simulate this whole thing, we have created two private function. So we have a transform function, which is the add account statement. Basically it will just take the account and wrap this syntax around it. But the most important one is the get account info that we're calling here on line 39. And we are using it to simulate a sequence basically. So we have a timer with the RxJS um, operator. And then basically every second it will update the account, giving it the account type first, the account services, the account number, and last, the most important one for us, the account status. So we remember that on the filter, it's not going to fire or it's not going to react until we get an account status. Okay. So, and at the bottom of it real quick, we have it here every single time. It's just like uh, reassigning the object and then updating it with the new information that it has here. So this is just done to simulate, um, you know, a real life thing that I saw pretty recently. So how would we go about this? So the problem we are looking at this here, it's already running on 4200 for us and it's just saying loading. And usually when you have anything that is not working, your very first thing is to go to inspect, looking at the dev tool and going to the console. And you're seeing that there is no errors. Nothing is being thrown out. There is nothing. This code seems to be clean. There's nothing here to help you. So, the very first thing that we would do in this case, we can say, okay, all right, we have a one liner here. Is this being fired at all? So let's expand this. And instead of just uh, going for a truthy value here, let's be a little more explicit. So I'm going to copy account status. Actually, I'm just going to cut it and I'm just going to expand this expression here. And let me start and say that I'm going to have a constant here that I'm going to call is true. Okay. So is true is going to be equal to this. Okay. And then we're just going to return is true. All right. So now we kind of have expanded like our filter logic here and my very first uh, reaction might be to say, let's log this out. So let's log is true. True. Command S and then go back to the, to our browser. We see that it's still not firing. So the code looks clean. What is happening here? Um, so if you already spotted the error, uh, great, but let's just pretend that we have to go through the steps to try to understand what's going on. So the filter, uh, we just saw that it never gets to this point. Now we have our simulator function here, private get account. Do we get anything going on here? So same thing. Let's have, we have new object. Let's try to log it out. Okay. So let's log new object. All right. And still nothing. So it tells me that basically this entire code block is not being fired. So the problem here, it might be very subtle 
if you have been uh, using RxJS and Observable for a while, it might just be very uh, obvious to you. But we have put together like this observer and everything, but we're not subscribing to anything. So basically, if you have this map uh, operator here, uh, it's never gonna, this entire thing is never gonna get fired at any point because we don't have a subscription. So it's like, why do I have to walk if I don't have anybody to show my work? So to prove the point um, that the consoles are not working, so let's just add, just to prove the point real quick, we're not gonna be critical about the structure of this. We can refactor this in another episode, but today we're just gonna do the debugging. So my assumption is that it's missing like a subscribe block, okay? So I'm just gonna turn on a subscribe here. Actually, we have to put it in the right spot because I'm still under the operators, the teardown. So at the end of the pipe operator, I'm going to add my subscribe. Okay. And honestly, I don't even have to do anything. The moment that I'm going to put in that in there, it's going to say to the observer, hey, wake up. There's somebody like listening to you. So, okay, go and sing your song or whatever. Do what I have to do. So right now, Doing this, I'm going to assume that my console statements are going to start firing. And you see them. I have about four or five statements because we are in a loop where account number basically uh, gets set up every single time. And we have like false, false, false. And finally, that's true. And if we look at what the true is, and that's going to be inside the filter. All right. That is great. So how can we... Uh, have a better strategy about debugging this whole thing. So we see that um, the console logs are pretty good, but they don't really tell you the history of things, how they happen, and like the sequencing of when you are having like something like a stream um, uh, over time. How is this going on? Like, is it ever going to be true? Is it going to be false all the time? those are not going to be caught by just a simple console log. So we're going to be using what are called breakpoints. We're going to be using breakpoints and we're going to set them up in Chrome first. And then afterwards, we're going to do the same thing in a VS Code. So to do that, usually when I come into a project and I have a lot of files, I'm just kind of trying to figure out what's going on. I might not go to VS Code first. I might just copy the name of the function or something that makes sure that I'm gonna catch this function. I'm gonna copy this and let's go back to Chrome. And what I'm gonna do real quick, let's get uh, rid of the console statements. Actually, I'm gonna leave them there. They're not hurting at all. Um, let's do this and let's come back to our source. We are already there and in here, if you come to sources, you're gonna have all the JavaScript and CSS that is on the page, basically. You're gonna have them, the Node module, the SRC, the Webpack, everything. And then we wanna be searching all those files by right-clicking on the top here and searching all file. And here, we're gonna paste the search, which is private get account info. And we wanna get, if you're in dev mode, you wanna get to the one that is right, you know, um, uh, that you are looking at in your IDE. So this is the one I want to be playing with, okay? Because you might get the Webpack version too, so that's not what we're interested in, at least not for today. So we see that the line numbers are the same. This is, this is very important, so I know that on line 66, yeah. So I'm looking at the, the, the file that I want to edit right like in the Chrome browser, okay? So I can get rid of this drawer real quick. And what I'm gonna do, the same thing basically, I'm gonna start putting some breakpoints here, okay? So if they are highlighted, that means that they are active. So I have like this uh, breakpoint. I have a second breakpoint here. So I wanna see if it is returning something or not. And at filter, let's go to the filter. Let's put one for the line 43 and let's see let's put a final one here 
for the account info. So basically what I'm trying to get to is, okay, um, is this being called? What is the value? Because when I go to the return statement, it's going to do every single time it loops through, it's going to show me the values so I can see the sequence. And then here, filter basically should stay false until it gets to the point where we have an account status. And when that account status is true, then it start like firing the rest of the teardown here, which is we're going to take it only once. We're going to do a little transform and we're going to return the account info. Okay. So let's go ahead and just refresh our browser. And you're going to see that our breakpoints are firing now. So console.log new object and new object. You see that we have an account um, object, but only residential has a value. Okay. So now once we are here, we can go to the next from here, which is just going to go to the next line. And then it's just going to give us again, new object. Now, if we want to go to our next breakpoint, is true coming here is going to be false. So anything that is going to be here should not be fired. Anything inside of the teardown, because since it's false, take one should not be active and the map should not be active. So we cannot expect to have something on line 52. So if I do this, it's just going to go all the way back to our function. And then new object this time has account services that is on and has account type residential that was on. And then you see that loop continues. We go back to filter and filter is still false. That's what we expecting. Okay. The next one this time is going to set up um, the account number, but account status is still null. So so forth, so on. And then we come back is true. It's going to be false because we still don't have an account status. Now, finally, when we get to the last one and then we have an account status, it's going to jump to filter and is true. This time is going to be true. Now our breakpoint on line 52 should fire because now the condition, the predicate that we had in filter is true. So now it's going to let it go through. Okay. And you see now when we go to line 52, this time we have the account info with all the information, but the most important part is the account status is active. Okay. This is what we want it. And if we take out subscribe, then we're going to have a problem. So let's keep going. And then here now, instead of just having something that is saying loading, the transformation that we have here on line 50, has been applied and then we have account showing with the proper account number. All right. So we went through that within uh, Chrome and you can see how this is very powerful because not only you kind of see what is going on in your, in, in your logic, but in almost real time, you can see the sequencing and see uh, at every single state of that logic, what are the values? And, and so forth and so on. And one thing that I uh, forgot to show you is here in the Chrome Dev Tools, if you expand this, because it's going to be important when we go back to VS Code, if you expand this, let me refresh this real quick. You're going to see that um, it's going to give you the variables and the context within the context where you are. So laps right now is at one. What is laps? Laps. Laps is right here. And it's telling you that we are now at index number one. Laps is at one because we already started here. And then it's going to be showing you the local variable that is going to be available right here. So you can, you have even uh, some watch expression. You can add some stuff in there. So looking at the scope, you see that, and as I'm going through, okay, every single time, wherever it is, wherever your breakpoint is, it's going to give you the value of the variables that are around. So here it's giving you basically 
you know, those value here. This is very valuable. It, it tells you in real time how your object, how your state is changing, okay? And finally, I'm just not going to go through the whole thing. Let's just get to the point where lapse this time is going to be equal to 2 and so forth and so on. So I wanted to show you this because imagine now that you had to come to Chrome to get this experience. And then depending on your setup, you know, you might not have enough. I, I highly recommend that you have more than one screen if you're going to be doing a lot of debugging and stuff. And just in general, as a developer, probably have a second screen. But let's say we wanted to recreate this environment doing the same exact thing without having to leave our favorite IDE, in my case, which is VS Code. Okay? So first, let me get rid of the breakpoints. You can do it either uh, here or you can just come back here and get rid of all those breakpoints. Okay. Now, just to make sure all my breakpoints are off. I don't want to have any on. Okay. Let me refresh. Yeah, we should just get to one, two, three, four seconds and it gets there. Perfect. Perfect.